miss it. The alley. Its characters. The slick lanes. The pins flying. How could you not? Whether it's riding the highs of last year. For the title! We got it! The real deal delivers. What a finish! Or the promise of a clean slate. 2021 is sure to deliver some fireworks. Yes, yes, yes! And what a way to kick things off. From desert skies across frozen tundras to sun-kissed shores, bowling stars have everything to gain. A major championship on the line. One million dollars up for grabs. The 2021 PBA season starts now on FS1. Welcome to beautiful Jupiter, Florida, as we officially open up the 2021 Professional Bowlers Association season, and we do it with a reinvigorated major. It is the PBA Players' Championship qualifying for this tournament. It took place last week in five different regions across our country. The top five from each of those five regions made their way here, so 25 of the world's best have descended upon the Florida Atlantic, and over the next four weeks, we will whittle that field down to five ahead of our live final show on Fox Sunday, February 21st. So today we start out here in the wild, wild west where three of today's competitors are chasing title number one. And the number one seed, Anthony Simonson, is chasing a reversal of last season. So glad you're with us as the PBA on Fox continues. Rob Stone, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, back here with you. Welcome back, it's my good friend. To be back, we my missed friend. you. Good to be back for the 63rd season Man. of the PBA. And let's start with our number one seed here at the PBA Players Championship, 24-year-old yeah. Anthony Simonson. He's number one today in the West, but it was all about the number two last year, as in four second place finishes. So you, oh, you want numbers? I do. You want some numbers? How about a million dollars? Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. At age 19, Anthony Simonson became the youngest player in PBA history to win a major. And then he became the youngest player to win two majors. The number three ranked player in the world. But Rob, I promise you this, there's players out on this tour that feel he may be the most talented player. And if he wins this entire event, He's this close mm -hmm. to making a million dollars in his career, and he's only 24 years old. Money talks, my friend, and yeah. it screams when it's that type of amount. Jason Belmonte did not qualify via the West. His loss, our gain. Belmo, the reigning player of the year, the six-time player of the year, part of every single one of our broadcasts for the PBA Players Championship. Belmo, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I know you'd rather be out there, but let's talk about today's one seed, Anthony Simonson. And this is a young man and you that you've seen a tremendous amount of growth from over a short period of time. Yeah, good day, boys. Good day, everyone at home. Uh, Anthony has just improved uh, leaps and bounds over the last, in particular, 18 months. And I think the thing that has really been evident in that improvement has been his mental growth. He is an incredibly talented player. We've all known that for a very long time. But the way that he's grown mature, uh, his maturity on the lanes has just been incredible to watch. I'm really proud of the guy, to be honest. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the performance that he gives today. Hopefully, uh, you know, the guys that run the ladder with him also give a great performance. Uh, he's taking care of himself. You're going to see a slim down Anthony Simonson today. And Anthony, our number one seed, standing by moments ago with our Kimberly Pressler. Anthony, there's been a lot of talk about how you've grown mentally in the past year, but you've also been practicing more than ever before. What has triggered those changes? Uh, you know, I think mentally has been uh, an aspect of my game that I've struggled with a little bit uh, over the years past. I'm getting older, getting a little more wiser. Uh, you know, getting some kind words from a couple of the guys who've been out on tour for a while, that's really helped. Uh, you know, I feel like I've been pretty successful over the past few years with minimal practice, uh, and I think in order to take it to the next level, I'm going to have to practice much more. All right, well, speaking of practice, you better head over there right now and head to your practice. Good luck today. Thank you. Kimberly, Anthony, thank you guys. So we begin with our four versus five matchup. Darren Tang taking on Chris Kelso. 
More on the young man from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, your five seed in a moment. The winner to take on multiple tour title is Jacob Buttruff, Wesley Lowe Jr. What a story this kid is. Yeah. Could have been Rookie of the Year last year if there was that trophy awarded. And then there's Anthony Simonson, your one seed. two career PBA regional titles, the 2018-19 USBC Greater Denver Mayo Bowler of the Year is Chris Kelso. All right, go get it here, kid. I'm fired up for this young man. Head mechanic at Holiday Lanes in Lakewood, Colorado, and here he is rolling with the big boys. First time under the lights of TV. What do you got, Chris? Pretty awesome start there for a guy that's never experienced anything like this. Look, when your first uh, shot on television is that pure, it makes the next whatever and uh, many shots that he gets on TV a little bit easier. A two-time member of Team USA and three-time All-American at San Jose State. He made four TV finals in 2020. Darren Tang. Last year, Darren Tang, a second-place finish, a third-place finish, a fourth-place finish. Don't have to do the math, Randy, to know what he's missing and what he wants <laughs> this year. You're all about the numbers, too. I am. A little bit of a number fetish here on the first show. I got a question for Jason, though, about Darren Tang. In the world of power, and nobody knows power better than yourself, Darren Tang is not a, a power player. I mean, he is a middle-of-the-road, you know, kind of a low-rev rate guy. How is he able to compete with all the big guns? Well, you have to add other tools into your repertoire, and Darren has worked incredibly, pr incredibly uh, hard on being able to manipulate police, manipulate ball speed, and he's doing that better and better every single week. We were talking to Darren on our Zoom calls this week, and Randy jumps up and says, you know, you're kind of a middle-of-the-road power guy, and his response, are you, are you telling me I don't have power? <laughs> Left the 10. Well, he's got accuracy, he knows that. He's got shot-making ability. He said he's similar to a, a, a Bill O'Neill type. He looks to Bill's game as, as some guidance for how he should be playing the lanes. Pretty good guy to be following. Yeah, you're right, and he's got a great mental game too. I mean, he really believes in himself and he's very confident. With. Oh, that will play havoc with your head early. And we saw so much of that in 2020, Jace. It's, it's not easy to, to come out onto the lanes, but the way the season was in 2020 and the way that it started here in 2021, it, it's so many breaks. You know, we're not getting in a, a run of five, six weeks in a row on television. It's we play for a little bit, then we have a break, and it's hard to come back. Oh, and 10 pin left standing for Kelso as well. Nice looking shot there on the right lane for Chris. And his first two shots on television, like Jason said earlier, the first shot was pure and that shot looked beautiful as well. But that right lane characteristically plays a little bit tighter down lane on this pair here at Bolero Jupiter. Tang just missed the 10. Kelso avoids that fate, so he remains clean. Strike spare to start his first televised program. Well, Chris has got Hang on, hold that thought, Jason. 39-foot Don Carter pattern. The right-handers with the power they're gonna play just left of third arrow, feed it out to that break point right around the 7-8 board. And the lefties will play just a little bit farther towards the gutter. I thought there may have been a chance for maybe Darren Tang to go straighter from second arrow. Doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. We begin the third. Back on the strike train is Kelso. Strike first, strike hard, no mercy. So he sits down, strike, spare, strike. That's a fair bit to the inside of the last shot that he struck on. And that's always a good sign when you know you can miss target left and hit the pocket. Yeah, again, he's, he's done a few things now that you want to get 
straight out of the way. He sped a 10 pin on TV for the first time. He's thrown a strike and he's got a little room down lane. Three things that are going to really loosen him up. Tang responds with a strike after that open frame in the second. See, and look how beautifully accurate those last couple of shots were for Darren Tang. His main goal for this season, get that elusive first title. He had a, a goal sheet last year, he was telling us. That was to be in the top 15 in pretty much every category. And he achieved that, so he, he bumped it up. He now wants to be more in the top eight of every category. Make match play at all the majors. And here he is, opening match of the West Region Final. Back to back. Yeah, that was a really nice shot from Darren. The, the biggest difference I saw between the two shots on the left lane was it looked like that ball, he got his hand around the side of it just a little more to create a little bit more down lane motion. Give it a bit more angle through the pins, which helps with the carry. It's a great shot considering, you know, the ring 10 flag in the second frame can sometimes make it a little tricky to step up on that lane and throw it as good as he just did. The arsenal of Kelso. It's dialed in, the big man is dialed in. This guy's the real deal, I mean, if you look back at what he's done in his limited career, he's won two regional titles, and one of them was when he beat Wesley Lowe, who we'll see uh, a little later in the t in the telecast. But this guy throws it really nice, and I'll tell you what, he's not afraid. He's come out firing. Hey, he's never been under the TV lights, was telling us it, it's stressful, but exciting. Had a long journey back home from the West in Arizona. He had to get to Colorado, hit a snowstorm, which slowed him back <laughs> down, gave him more time to think about, you know, what, what the lights of, of the PBA on FS1 are going to be like. And he is handling it so well early. Impressed, Jace? I am very much so. I think he's got a really strong ball roll. Look, everyone can see the revolutions that he puts on the ball. That one there just under 500 RPM. He's hit it over 500 a couple of times. But what I'm really liking is the way that the ball is actually rolling. It seems to be a very heavy roll. Gives him a lot of room down lane. Um, he's going to give Darren a, a really good match right now. Tang trying to match Kelso with a three-bagger of his own. And he does. You, you know, Rob, when you're Darren Tang, you get, this is a dream matchup for you, going up against a guy who's never been on television before. But it's really not playing out that way early on through five. Yep, he's playing in. Right where everybody else is, you can see the blue line just aboard right of the fourth arrow, which would be the 20th board on the lane. See his average through qualifying again, 28 games on four different oil patterns. Came in fourth, your one seed, Anthony Simonson. We'll see him a little bit later today here on FS1. Tang to open the sixth. First handbone of the year. <laughs> You've been waiting for that one for a while, haven't you, pal? Yeah, longer than you know. <laughs> longer than you know, man. So Tang able to shake off that open in the second with four straight strikes. Up next, big Chris Kelso trying to move on in his first ever event. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. Bill O'Neill wins the 2020 PBA Players Championship. Chris Prather wins the TOC. Yes, yes, yes. Jason Belmonte wins the 2020 PBA World Championship. Celebrate! Jacob Buttress camp for the title. He is your U.S. Open champion. Here's a look at the Guaranteed Rate PBA Tour majors this year, all of them live on Fox or FS1. The PBA Players Championship wraps up February 21st. 
week later here in Jupiter, it's the TOC. And then we head north to beautiful Tampa, Florida for the World Championship. And then out west to Reno for both the USBC Masters and the US Open. The five winners of the majors all head to the PBA SummerSlam, which you can see April 18th on Fox. Rob, Randy, Belmo, Kimberly, back here with you for the West Region Finals of the PBA Players Championship. You're looking live at Chris Kelzo, the number five seed, 29-year-old from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, head mechanic at Holiday Lanes, making his TV debut, and he is gonna do it by dropping four straight here. His first professional ham bone. You're welcome, Chris Kelzo. <laughs> well, that was a big hurdle that he crossed there. The first was the first couple of shots on television for the first time. The second is coming out of commercial break and just acing it. Well, he's had things, Belmo, go his way so far. Comfortable under the lights, not a big crowd to intimidate him. And the fact that Darren Tang opened up in the, with an open frame in the second, I think took a lot of pressure off the big man's shoulders. Yeah, I think all of those things are taken into effect and he's taken full advantage of it. in a row, a little Yahtzee for the big man from Colorado. I, I think he likes the pattern as well, mm -hmm. and obviously loves his ball reaction. He sees a little bit of miss area on the lanes, both left and right. The one thing that I'm hoping he's thinking about is under the lights, the transition of the oil pattern will occur faster than usual. Everything looks great right now, but he is bowling against someone who has experience under lights, who may be making those moves a little quicker. So... For Chris's sake, let's hope he makes those moves. Now, Tang has really bounced back from whiffing on that 10 pin in the second frame. He has been perfect since. Big differences rev rate in this match where Darren's just over 400 and Chris just under 500. And that's the difference in power. But yeah, I agree with Jason and it, it with a first-time player in Chris Kelso missing the transition, it could be disastrous. I'm not sure where he was going to get the information from that would say, hey, watch out for that. Tang to open up the eighth. Down 12. Hit. Oh. Hits again. Well, Let's the go. other thing that I'm noticing here is the equipment choices. Darren is using a shinier bowling ball. So that transition, that early hook, that shine is going to delay that transition in the front part of the lane a little more. Chris's ball, a lot more surface. It may read that transition. And it's interesting, when we talked to Darren this week, he said, Randy, I'm fearful of setting up lanes for his competition. Yeah. And it's obviously because of his style, how slow he throws it, the type of equipment he has to use. Crusher Kelso with another strike. Six in a row. Ace those last couple there, but you know, Jason made mention of the fact that he's using a lot of surface. He's also using a really strong asymmetrical bowling ball. So you put the two together. Jason, I know you use that, that combination a lot on this tour. What kind of reaction does it create for you? Well, you're always trying to control the pocket, especially first game out on television. You don't necessarily want to create too much angle. That's exactly what he's doing right now. He is controlling the pocket. And this frame right now is the biggest one of his career because it will mean he won't be able to be shut out if he strikes. And there's the strike. Come on. Referee, accuracy, location. Check, check, check. I mean, that red line looks like it's just written completely over the blue line, yeah. right? Uh, Aces, and he knew getting up in that frame that if he didn't strike, he could lose this game. And that's perfect. Well, now that just throws all the pressure onto Darren. He cannot miss. He has to strike. And that, that can really weigh coming down the back end of a game. Tang down 22. His effort in the ninth. Yeah, way, way inside of target there, Randy. And once his bowling ball didn't see that friction to the right, he lost all of that angle into the pocket. And at 400 RPM, he's not going to get those off hits like a Chris would. So it's, uh, he'll know that. He'll know it wasn't a great shot. 
Uh, mathematically, he's still in this, but he's got to make this spare and he's got to strike out. The story, though, this is Kelso's to lose. Yeah, I agree. I, I, you know, what was interesting before that frame and is if you look at the scoreboard with all this, the X's, the difference was the second frame. If Tang would have spared there, we would have been tied going into that ninth frame. And you could see just what a difference missing that spare made. And now he just compounds it with not striking in the ninth. Into 10, gets it. Needs two more to turn the heat up ever so slightly on Kelso. And this is where some of the experience of Darren being on TV will help him. He'll slow everything down. He may even take a re rack and he'll make Chris sit just that little bit longer and think about it. But all of that won't mean anything if this one here isn't a strike. another one. So is this where he needs to take a page out of the Wee Iceman's book, Norm Duke, and just c continually re-rack until you're out? <laughs> no, he, make, just asked, he just asked <laughs> for this first of two re-racks. Yeah, and, and then just make, uh, just make Chris sit as long as you could possibly make him sit, right? I, I think the etiquette is one in this, in this particular <laughs> position. I mean, unless the rack was terrible, because mathematically, he will need every pin. If Chris is to open and Warren himself a split, 247... Uh, makes it he needs a clean he needs a clean frame here you see the slashes the white slashes underneath the names on the scoreboard bug right there so tang one re-rack left kelso has two should he need them right through the nose yeah, high leaving the fast eight, not real good because he loses two pins in count, and that will take a little bit more pressure off of Chris Kelso here in the 10th frame. The nonverbals tell it all. The punch and the stare. And Kelso is staring down his first ever win on television this tang moments ago. Nine for the win. Yes, Give him sir. ten. Kelso moves on. I mean, what was the, the over-under on Chris Kelso shooting 280 his first game on television? I did not ask my friends at Fox Bet, but I should have. Yeah, and uh, just to clarify, that is a really strong symmetrical ball, not asymmetrical, but it still has a lot of surface. Very strong, very early kind of replicating that same type of role that Jason was talking about. So now, Jace, what should he do with his time? He's got two free shots here, essentially. Well, you want to you wanna stay in the moment. You want to make sure you're still executing really well. But you may also want to just throw a different ball just to see what's going to happen. As we saw that shot right there, it's the same ball, still a lot of surface on it. And that one left the 10-pin. It was a really good shot, but left the 10-pin. So now he's going to start thinking, what is my next move? And with that transition happening under lights, he'll have to make it quick. He's about to bowl one of the hottest players in the last three years. So, And that player is our three seed, Jacob Buttruff. You know, two seasons ago, Buttruff was a player of the year candidate. Last year went well. Well, it didn't go well. I'll let Randy describe Buttruff's last year when we return. The NFL playoffs continue today. The NFC Championship presented by TurboTax Live. Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers live from Green Bay. Pre-game coverage starts in about half an hour, 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Also available on the Fox Sports app. Who do you like? Uh, heart or head? Um, 
Hart. Hart. Hart is the guy's in pewter. Okay. Head. Uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers, right? Maybe. All right, here's your top five above the yellow line from the West. Our good friend PJ Haggerty just, mm -hmm. just missing out. Unfortunately, that list does not go all the way down to 19, which is where you would find Mr. Belmonte. Yeah, we, we that, didn't have a big enough graphic, did we, to get that low? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen the number 19 associated with you unless you used to wear it when you would play water polo or soccer growing up. So here's your West Region stepladder bracket. Again, the winner of today's West Region final moves on to the PBA Players Championship live on Fox next month. Chris Ketslow, your five seed, has moved on. He's got the three seed, Jacob Buttruff. Kelso up first. Strike first, strike hard. This guy's got a monster of a look, doesn't he, Jason? It's going to be difficult to beat if it stays there. Uh, I keep going back to the transition, but I feel like that is the only thing that is going to slow him down. Butcher, if you're three seed here in the West, he's got some double wood to deal with. All right, so uh, what did you want to talk about right before we went to break? Well, so we, we spoke with Jacob Buttruff, and I said, hey, Jace, either you, either Kimberly, yourself, or my, we asked the question, you know, how do you describe nine, you know, 2020? He goes, that's yeah, decent, but it wasn't, you know, 2019, my breakout year, and you jumped in. He said, it, it wasn't decent. It, it was a word that started with D, though. It was a disaster. Disaster. I mean, think about the year before when he finished runner-up to player of the year to Jason Belmonte. I mean, last year was just... Brutal for for uh, Jacob. I mean, we got used to him uh, winning and making a lot of TV shows and making a lot of money. And you know, he had the struggles with his mom and um, and uh, all the all the uh, emotional and personal stuff that he went through last year. But um, you know, he's young and he's resilient, and we'll see if he's able to bounce back um, this season here in 2021. See his arsenal right there. Second frame starts. Messenger drops the seven. The late kiss. He's going with the old purple hammer. Something new, huh, Jason? Yeah, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? I, I think I think Jacob is going to, he's going to have to bowl really, really well in terms of controlling his break point. I was watching the practice. The pins here, uh, it didn't look like they were bouncing around. Too, too well for the urethane ball, but when he, he got the ball going through the pins at the right angle, it struck every single time. How does he do that? Well, controls his ball speed more so than, than anything, and also his rev rate. You know, he's going to have to want to repeat everything as well as he possibly can. The Cinderella story, Chris Kelto up in the second. Back to back, opening jacks in match two. Looks like he's trying to cheat it a little bit farther towards the center part of the lane, but you can see 16 to 5 on our strike track there as we take a look at his form. It's good stuff here. He's got a great hand. His ball roll is tremendous. Well, he's, a, he's, a, he's got a big hand. He's, he's a big boy. He's got a lot of power behind him. But the thing that I think is really showing uh, everyone here at home is he knows exactly where this ball is going every single time. Very accurate. It's been very impressive. The measurables, 5'10", 260. It's like he's trying to put a catcher's mitt inside a bowling ball. Opening three bagger here in match two. No fear from Crusher Kelso early on. Perfect seven for seven on the left lane. Had nine strikes in the opening match, including eight in a row. Buttruff. It's now a double for Jacob after that opening spare. Let's go back to last summer. Jacob, a little perfection in the PBA Tour Finals. Did it with reactive resin, too. We're not used to seeing him throw a lot of reactive resin. Came the 28th in PBA history to hit 300. 
under the lights of TV. Will be no 300 for him this match. Oh, how about that? Huge break. Oh, backwards tomahawk. He's going to have to get all of them to keep up with Chris the way that Chris is bowling. But there again is the difference in ball motion with that urethane ball. The first time he bowled on that lane, we had the messenger seven, but it went really, really late down the lane. He tried to create a bit more angle. It overhooked, and then he tripped the six pin. He has to execute perfectly with that ball, in particular on the left line. Go. Yes. He has been mistake free here today. Kelso. My goodness. RPM's at 519. Opening Hambone. He's already taken care of the four seed, Darren Tang. Now he's got Jacob Buttruff in his sights. Up 10 as we start the fifth. You know, Jason has been talking about the only thing that looks like it's, that's going to slow Chris down is the transition, the lane's changing. This game, he may not see that because he's the only right-hander out there. Oh, help. Sit. Didn't like oh. it. Gets away with it. What Let's say go. you? What say you on that shot, Jason? I think you, me, everyone watching at home, including the guy who threw the ball, was a little bit shocked to see that reaction. But when you're doing everything right, when your hand is in the right position, your ball speed is great, you're going to find that area on the lane. No matter how difficult the pattern is, you will find a little extra room. How many times have we said through the years, you have to have a little luck Absolutely. to win on the tour? Oh, boy. Looks like he's throwing a black hammer on that lane, a purple oh. hammer on the left lane. And this l right lane has always been tighter down lane throughout the competition here. And, and uh, it looks like the same thing on Jacob's side of the lane. This will be the toughest spare conversion of the day so far. 3-7, converted only 18% of the time. And again, it's an open frame for the gentleman that Kelso is bowling against. He showed in match one, you cannot create an opening for him because he's got that foot on the gas and that right foot is not coming off. Good bounce back ball from Buttruff. <sighs> Buttruff in a 34-pin hole to the Cinderella story. That is Chris Kelso, who's chasing a 300 game here in match number two. We welcome you back to the PBA Players Championship live on FS1, the first event of this, the 63rd year of the PBA season we've got quite a story developing that young man there on the right chris kelso 29 year old from outside of denver wheat ridge colorado head mechanic out at holiday lanes in lakewood colorado he's always wanted to be on the tour to bowl against the best and here he is first time under the tv lights already one win under his belt and he is chasing perfection here in match two and it continues he's got the first six straight randy crack open that six pack for Kelso. Another gorgeous shot by Chris. Now, you know, we, we, uh, we were on the Zoom call with him. You asked him uh, what his nickname was, and, and he told you it was Crusher, I think, right? But you, you said you were going to come up with something a little better than that. I don't that. know if he came up with Crusher or we did, but... It, no, I, I came up with something different. Just his name, like, but without even seeing him, I said, uh, with a name like Chris Kelso, you need a nickname. Yeah. He's got a little Bam Bam Bigelow look to him. But here's Kelso going for the front seven, and he's got it. And Randy, Belmo, we've got an alert. We've got a PBA on Fox bowling alert coming up. We are officially chasing 300. I love it. It's great. <laughs> you wouldn't have thought it would be Chris Kelso, though. Correct. What today's performance is basically doing, though, is giving everybody a warning. Anytime you see me on television, 
look what I'm capable of. Buttruff, another nasty leave. He is in deep, deep trouble right now. Yeah, and I think it's pretty obvious why he chose to finish on the left lane based on what's happened on that right lane for him. I think when Jacob looks back at this tape, using the urethane ball today was probably the downfall. As we saw right there, the last time he was on that lane, he got a little further left, didn't hook. That time he got a little more up the lane, it overhooked. That's telling me immediately Wrong ball. how accurate and repetitive you have to be where, you know, Chris, well, we saw one shot. He was a little, a little left of target. Yeah. Still looked really, really good through the pins. Jacob really needed to move in, use his reactive bowling ball, and uh, this will go down to lesson learned. Yep, I agree. And he has learned a, a plethora of lessons over the last couple months. Uh, we talked, Randy, you mentioned the, the passing of his mother in, in early November, and it really triggered some lifestyle changes for Jacob. You know, he's, he's, he's changing the way he's handling himself off the lanes. He admits he's made some, some poor decisions in the past. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of went out of his way to say, look, I know, I know mom's upstairs looking down at me, and I, I need to make the good decisions and not disappoint her. I mean, I agree with all of that. I, he needs to. If, if you want to be successful for a long period of time in any sport, it's not just what you do on the lanes. It's also what happens off them. And if you can stay level-headed, you can make right life to show our choices. It gives you a better chance for longevity. Great. Eight in a row for Kelto. That's back-to-back -back hand bones. That's a, a rare double hand bone. They serve those with a side of gravy and biscuits down here in the south as we take a look <laughs> at your strike track 3D. Yeah, it shows you just uh, how different both players are playing uh, their sides of the lane. But great animation, and that's our strike track 3D. Good stuff. Arrow position, good seven boards different. But right now, it's all Chris Kelso, and I'll tell you what, he's sending a message to the PBA Tour that this guy is for real. Oh, come oh, on! Oh my stupid seven pin! You gotta be kidding me! Th that ball rolled a pinch earlier, held its line, and the way that it went through the pins, I thought, yep, there's another one. I don't know how the seven pin stood. It, it, that's not right, that's unfair. Re-rack, do it again. Unreal. But you know what? Oh. How does that miss it? That's crazy. That might be a blessing in disguise, and I'll tell you why. Jason's been talking about transition throughout the telecast. Give me a look at that shot and go, hey, that one rolled a little bit earlier than the last one. Time to make a move. Well, I'm glad you see the positive in it, Randy. I'm pretty, <laughs> sure, I'm pretty sure he wanted 300. I'm pretty sure. But Randy's always been a silver lining kind of guy, Jason. You just need to hang out with us more. I'm the one who's always bringing down the broadcast. Hey, hey, bro, bro, half full, bro, half full. <laughs> well, the other thing that that will do now is because he doesn't have the opportunity for a 300 or to get the 300, those nerves of height, it's going to calm him down yeah. a little bit. I've, I've been in that position yeah. where you do fire a 300. It is very hard to come back and throw another game. See, Rob, silver lining. Silver yep. lining, yep. The winner of the West region today will join the eventual other four region winners. We'll all come back here to Bolero Jupiter in Florida for the live broadcast of the PBA Players Championship on Fox next month. It'll be the highest first place payout of the season. And Kelso is still in line for that, the five seed. He's already taken care of Darren Tang, 269, 245. He's got Jacob Buttruff down as well as Buttruff done with a 213. Now, this was an emphatic victory for Kelso. Yeah, just like all over him, uh, like a bulldog on a pork chop from frame one and just relentless, never let up. Had the unfortunate spare in the ninth where the seven pin denied him. 
his continued quest for 300. Gets back on the strike train here in the 10th. He's got two more shots, and then he's going to focus on a really interesting young man that we're excited to see, a rookie of the year type candidate, Wesley Lowe Jr. Let's take a, let's take a look at the mitts on Kelso. Well, and the next thing uh, for the next game, Randy, will lead into the point you made about this game. Playing another left-handed player won't see that transition as fast as you would if there were two right-handers. At some point, though, it's coming. Sure. He has to be aware of it. I think it's coming a little faster on the left lane because that lane does hook more. Agreed. Uh, but so far, the way that he's, he's letting the ball go off his hand, the way it's rolling down the lane in the heavy roll, if he gets close to the 1-3, his strike percentage is incredibly high. And let me just add one more thing to it. He's bowling. He's going up against a player who's never been on television mm -hmm. before. This guy couldn't be more comfortable. A 269 and a 268 for Chris Kelso. The five seed moves on to our semifinals. And when the PBA on FS1 resumes, we're going to do some backyard bowling with our number two seed, Wesley Lowe. Uh, did you guys hear about the oil pattern the I guys use for this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it. Do you? Do you now? All right. More on that when we return. We welcome you back to FS1's live coverage of the PBA Players Championship. Last year, another year dominated by Jason Belmonte. Two majors, also won the Chameleon at the World Series of Bowling. So three titles helping lead to his sixth Player of the Year honor. And Belmo part of all of our broadcasts to the PBA Players Championship. We're getting used to scenes like that from yeah. Mr. Belmonte, Randy. Really. I'll tell you what, a, a, a phenomenal year for Jason, but the one that really uh, stood out for me was the World Championships when his family was there to watch him bowl on television for the first time. Take a look at the other 2020 award winners. No Rookie of the Year handed out. Uh, not enough qualifying events, right. so every rookie that was considered a rookie last year also considered a rookie <laughs> here you get us in 2021, including Wesley Lowe Jr., yeah. our two seed, who we're going to see in a moment. Rob Stone, Randy Peterson back here with you. Jason Belmonte just over our shoulder. And uh, Belmo, man, congrats. Huh? It, it's getting old news, this player of the year thing. But if, if you reflect back on your campaign last year, it was a slow start by your standards. What was able to trigger it into another player of the year caliber type season? Yeah, those early hiccups on television. The, the one thing that I had to realize is that I'm a human being. Uh, I have a long career uh, before, uh, behind me and ahead of me. Those types of roller coaster weeks and seasons are going to happen. So once I understood, listen, it's okay. It's just a little bump in the road. You've got to be able to work your way through it. I came back really, really positive for the rest of the season, positive enough to, to win a couple of majors um, and, and tick a lot of the, the goals that I had off for that season off still. And I think that's probably the thing that I'm proud of most is being able to bounce back after feeling a little defeated early on, but finding a way to still get it done. Jason, I know how special it was uh, for you to win the world championship with your family there, uh, but tell us how special it was for you to win the U.S. Open. It was incredible. I mean, the most ironic thing about it all is in a, we were, in that particular event was the first time that we had no fans. So in a week with no one allowed to come and watch, uh, my family was actually there to support me. So it was an incredible moment to see my children behind me, my wife. Um, and I have to give a special shout out to my son, Hugo, who is actually bowling right now in the Orange uh, Championships all the way back home. So I'm very proud of him. He was there, watched every single ball of mine that week. And those are the kinds of moments that I'll, I'll look back on and just be incredibly grateful for. Do, do we have an update on how Hugo's doing today? He uh, is leading of the course all he is. events. Of course uh, he is. He's a Belmonte. What do you <laughs> That's what Belmontes do. They lead bowling <laughs> tournaments. Jason. Uh, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of him. You have no idea. As you, no, no, I do have an idea. I've got a real good idea yeah. how proud you are of that young man. And uh, we're proud of you and everything that you've been able to do yeah. and accomplish so far. And there are so many more great years ahead for you. Soon to be the Hall of Famer, Jason Belmonte. Rob Stone with the 
real Hall of Famer right now in Randy Peterson. Let's take a look at our updated stepladder field here and our one seed, Anthony Simonson, who's also on a career track that should very well lead him to the Hall of Fame is your number one seed up next. Your five seed, Chris Kelso, taking on two seed, Wesley Lowe Jr. Wesley, a uh, young man who bowled collegiately at Wichita State. And boy, to be to be young and have free time <laughs> and creativity. Remember what those days, <laughs> yeah, remember what remember. Those days are yep, like? Yep. Yeah, well, well, Wesley is all of them. Young, creative, free time. And so Wesley and his buddies back in Wichita, when you got downtime, what do you do? Yeah, you just do dumb things and, and dumb, beautiful, perfect things like building a bowling center in your backyard. Yes, this was uh, back in 2019. Wesley and his mates, yeah, we got to mow the yard first, lay out the plywood after the run to Home Depot or Lowe's, throw out the cinder blocks, maybe do some drilling, do some painting, and, and you've got yourself a lane in the backyard. Well, you got to put oil on it, too. And oh. I, I heard from a really good source they use canola oil. Yeah, that looks like, that 100% looks like canola oil. <laughs> yeah, that was oil. straight up canola oil. And there they are. They, they need to get a, a better ball return system. That's about my only complaint. Look at that a little strike right there. Maybe they could hire one of the neighbor kids to stand at the back uh, of the lane and just just return shots. Get the Hanrahan kid to come back <laughs> and fetch the pins. <laughs> Coming back. Oh, that is so much fun. So, uh, Kimberly is standing by with the young bowling lane creator, Wesley Lowe. Kimberly. I don't know about you guys, but I absolutely love that video. Wesley, I have to ask, I think everybody wants to know what brought it about that you said, listen, I, I want to put some lanes in my backyard. A few of my friends I room with in college are like, we need to do something crazy for the YouTube channel. So they said, let's build a bowling lane in our backyard. And you know, it was a four day project and we got built it. Our neighbors probably don't like us so much, but it's cool, cool project we did. Well, it definitely looked fun, but you are no longer in the backyard. You are out here under the Fox FS1 lights for the first time. How are your nerves and what was your preparation coming into today? Uh, my preparation was just training at B3 Performance down in Tempe and my nerves are, they're high right now, but my, I'm just going to stay in the moment and make the best shots I can. All right. Well, best of luck to you too. Perfect. Thank you Thank so you. much. If you build it, they will come <laughs> to Wesley's backyard. West the builder? At least, yeah. Hey, it is the semifinal of the PBA Players Championship West Region next. Hey, this is no canola oil lane, Wesley. This is where the best in the world bowl. We welcome you back to FS1's live coverage of the PBA Players Championship. Rob Stone, Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, Jason Belmonte, Kimberly Pressler back here with you inside Bolero Jupiter. Beautiful east coast of Florida. We are set for our semifinal of the West region right now. Chris Kelso with a 269 and a 268. Randy, quick, what's that average out to? Uh, simple math, uh, 268. Point five. You've got it, my friend. Well done. Your five seed set to take on two seed. Wesley Lowe, Kelso. Killer Kelso up first. Killer. Strike first, strike hard. At 15, he is the youngest player to ever win a PBA regional tournament. The four-time PBA regional champion, Wesley Lowe, Jr. Wesley from Palmdale, 23 years old. Real engaging kid. This is second year on the Pro Tour. He starts with a strike as well. It didn't look like he liked it when he let go of it. Either that or he had some footing trouble. Let's take a look real quick. Watch his reaction. Yeah. That ball ended up in a good spot. Well, I think he's watched Jacob's last match and decided I'm not going to play where Jacob did. I think I'm going to play a little bit more aggressively, move more into the inside part of the lane, see more of that oil. Multi-time Team USA and Junior Team USA member. Five career gold medals at the World Bowling Youth Championship. He's got pedigree. He's got a beautiful future. He's got a spare conversion coming up here in the second. Single pin attack of the three coming up. Hey, Rob, uh, here's an interesting fact for mm -hmm. you. Did you know that Wesley is the youngest player?
to ever win a PBA regional? He was 15. Yeah, I just heard Mike Jay say that on the on the introduction. That's where I got it from. Yeah. Oh boy. Way to, way to use your resources. Oh, the little kid's got in the skinny jeans to get that one in the pit. It's a low. Remains clean. Strike spare. Ooh. What do you call that? Skinny jeans? Yeah, getting them in the skinny jeans. Squeeze into those suckers. Kelso does not strike me as a skinny jean kind of guy. It's not his style. I like this kid. Yeah, another one. So using the Kegel uh, strike track there, uh, you can see that he hasn't moved a whole lot on that right lane. He's been very, very fortunate that the transition hasn't even started to creep in on that right lane. At least so we have can... history, Jason. Met out in Shawnee, Oklahoma as well. Regional tour title. Went Chris's way. Took care of Wesley in the title match. The winner of this one to take on your one seed, Anthony Simonson in the West Region Finals. Kelso. Come on. Opening three bagger. Again, he right. starts so strong and doesn't leave any room for opening for the adversary. I mean, he's made a lot of great shots. I mean, he got away with a couple, you know, a couple shots that were tugged on that left lane, but I mean, overall, I think his performance today has been brilliant. No, and that Kegel Specto image there just showed that he's around the 17.7 .7 board on the left lane. He started around the 16, so he's creeping left on that left lane, which is telling me he's getting ready for the transition. He seems to be making smart moves. Good for him. Low. Back on the strike train and Randy. Uh, this is a young pro that you have a long history with that we just realized this week. Well, I, I'm not so sure how much history we have, but you know, I met this little guy, uh, I think that was 2005 or 2006 at the US Open in uh, Fountain Valley, California. And there was this little kid running around, he had this name shirt on and uh, we would uh, bowl the Pro-Am and all the bowlers would stop to watch Wesley throw a ball down the lane. It was the absolute cutest thing you'd ever seen. And here he's doing it with the best in the world. Close. Seven pin, took a little nudge, but won't drop. He's getting a little closer on that left lane, but still not the same reaction on the two lanes. No, that lane definitely is a lot tighter for him down the lane. I think what makes it a little bit trickier as well with Jacob using urethane, it, it maybe carried the oil down a little more. It's probably also in his head a little bit. Uh, it could be making, you know, Wesley feel like he's going to have to make uh, another move on that lane. But mathematically, based on the way Chris is bowling, Wesley shut out already. Back-to-back <laughs> <laughs> -back nine spares on that left lane for low. Kelso steps up. Perfect through three. Remember the last match? He opened with strikes in the first eight frames. Go. Play the hand bone music. Well, Saturday, Caleb Plant, the man who many are saying is going to be boxing's next can't-miss superstar. He defends his perfect record and super middleweight title against Caleb Truax in a primetime boxing event at a Saturday night, next Saturday night, on Fox. Kelso right now putting a heavyweight type beating on the field. Come on. Five in a row. Well, I'll tell you what, he's he's got a brilliant game plan to how, for how to attack this oil pattern. And he's following that pattern left on that left lane. He's making the moves and he's executing. And his ball is striking a lot. Only two 10 pins that he's left through two and a half games. Low, already down 40.
You heard in his interview, Jason, he said that the lanes were tough and that he was going to have to bowl his best to have any chance. And you're seeing it with the ball reaction that he has. Jacob Buttrup's ball reaction wasn't very good. And I'm not so sure how much of the urethane that Buttrup used influenced Wesley Lowe's reaction. I'm sure somewhat, but I, I can promise you that when your opponent comes out with the front five and it's the first time you're bowling on television, that's another reason to make it a little harder to get to the line and throw the ball. What Wesley's got to be thinking right now is we're at the halfway point of this game. I'm going to have to make an adjustment. And not only am I going to have to make an adjustment, I've got to take Chris out of my mind. Stop worrying about what he's doing and the strikes he's throwing. I've got to start putting some X's on the board, hopefully try and transition into some pressure thrown towards Chris. Although any pressure that Chris has faced, he seems to have handled it really well so far. His best finish on the PBA Tour, sixth. He did it twice. One as an amateur and one in a doubles oh, event. Hey, hey, Rob, before we go to break, you, you knew that thing about uh, Wesley being the youngest player to ever win a regional, right? I got another fun fact I, I, I'd tell you, I'll, I'll tell you about when we come back. Is it about, is it about league play? No. No. All right, because I got a good one about Wesley in league play. Okay. We'll have dueling fun facts got when it. we return to the PBA Players Championship from Jupiter, Florida. We welcome you back to the PBA Live on FS1. The on-lane graphics you see today, including the ball tracer, courtesy of our great friends and great partners at Clutch Bowling. I like the firework display over yeah, there. Yeah, I love me some Clutch Bowling. How about the fireworks from Francois Lavoie last season? Dropped a little 300 on us in the playoffs. Second player to ever bowl two 300s in PBA competition, Francois Lavoie. And that guy that was standing right behind him, Sean Rash. And we will see Francois next week when our coverage of the 2021 PBA Players Championship continues from here at Bolero Jupiter next Sunday, the 31st on FS1, 2 Eastern. It's the Southwest Regional Final. Mawa, the one seed. Some really interesting stories in there. Hanrahan, Williams, Benji Martinez, AJ Chapman as well. The story today, though, that man, Chris Kelso. You jerk. Well, the seven pin, come on. Last game, it was a seven pin, only a little bit different type that stopped him after he had the front eight. This time, it's a seven pin in the sixth. If it's a problem, you want it to be a seven pin problem. That's a question mark. Uh, well, as opposed to leaving 10 pins, I would say probably, yeah. If you're leaving 10 pins, that's never a good thing, whether it's a weak 10 or a rig 10. The ball's not going through the pins the right way. I mean, both of those shots there could have struck very, very easily. And so, yeah, it, I'd rather see the 7 pin standing than a 10 pin. We mentioned uh, back in match one, Chris Kelso. Head mechanic, big strapping lad, the name like that. He's he's begging for a nickname, and we asked him if he had one. We didn't we didn't like the one that, and he didn't like it either. The one that had been passed on to him by his fellow uh, employees there in the uh, the lane maintenance world at Holiday Lanes. Strike again for Kelso there. And we, I feel like we've been flooded lately with some some ideas. He's from Colorado, the Avalanche. Not a bad call from yeah. somebody standing behind me. You got that that momentum of the ball going down, right? I actually right. like that. Uh, this one just dropped to us. Not the big nasty. Little nasty. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I, I kind of like I'm Avalanche. Warming, I like I'm Avalanche. really warming up to that. A little Bam Bam Bigelow with the PBA as Wesley Lowe steps up. There we go, Wesley. Gets a strike there. Yeah, the future for, for Lowe really promising. You could hear in his voice the energy, the excitement, and the commitment he has to this sport. Well, that's his first double on television now. That'll loosen him up a little bit. This next shot, though, for me, is telling for the match. 
if he finds a way to get this ball to go as flush as he just threw one on the right lane, we may be in for a really interesting final few frames. Go! Pressure applied. Come on. It Unlock the ultimate fan experience with the all-new PBA Pinsiders program. You can gear up with official PBA swag, member-only content, and inside access to our events. Join today at PBA.com. It was close. It was close to flush. You could see the way the pins all kind of uh, were pushed to the right side of the lane and the messenger coming across. You want to see all those 10 pins fall back into the deck for the flush shot. But it's close. Come on. Another avalanche of pins falling in the pit. That's what a flush strike looks like yeah. and sounds like. All 10 buried in the pit. There's no way anything stands on a shot like that. But he's made a little bit of a move on that lane. After ring 10 in, he's creating a little bit more angle down lane by moving left and allowing his target to stay the same. He creates more launch angle, which then allows the ball to see more friction, which then allows the ball to go through the pins at a better angle. He told us it's always been his desire to be on the tour. Wanted to bowl the Masters, some of the bigger tournaments. He's more of a part-time player, but he's putting on a full-time performance today. That's the That's first right. time today he's That's left right. that four-pin. I think it's the first shot he's gone high on. Remember the one shot he tugged? He didn't like it at all. It went dead flush, but I think that's the first time today. In fact, it is the first time today that he's gone remotely high. Well, right there on the Kegel Spectre, the ball at the arrows was at 15 and a half boards. That's two boards further right at the arrows than what he has been rolling with, which means he's going to get to that friction sooner. Ball over reads, four pin. Now this makes it a really interesting match coming down the ninth and tenth. You see the back scores there, 249 for Wesley Lowe, 258 for Kelso. Real quick on Wesley, uh, Randy, when, at what age did you join a league? Uh, my first league, I was 12. 12. Belmo? I was three. Oh, well, that kind of fuses some of my story. <laughs> <laughs> Left the seven pin. Yeah, so Wesley, you know, got into it. His dad bowled three leagues a week. And he was telling us, you know, dad would just kind of pop me up on the counter and let the staff do some parenting while dad was, was doing some bowling. And um, eventually dad said, hey, you know, can my, kid, can my kid join a league? And they said, well, can you hold the ball and can it get all the way down? And he showed him at the age of three. Bang, he did it. And he was in a league. Well... Um, speaking of three, mm -hmm. um, July 2020, bowling in a USPC sanctioned event, his first three games oh, were yeah. 300, 300, 300, becoming uh, the 36 sanctioned 900 series. Yet, yeah, he didn't win it. Yet he did not win. <laughs> the Ponderosa Classic yeah. in Arizona. He's got a bright future, though. Sure does. I love this reverie, too. Look at that 550, Jason. That's that's kind of approaching your, your numbers. Yeah, and before we bowled the West region there in Arizona, like he mentioned in, in the interview with Kimberly, we were working together at a place there in Tempe called uh, B3 Performance. And one of the things he really wanted to work on was his consistency for the entire season. Wesley has a tendency to be able to put some huge numbers up for a very specific event, but then tends to go missing for a few weeks. So the one thing that I want to see from him this season is it's fantastic. We're seeing him on television. He bowled really well today, but I want to see another performance, seeing him on television again really, really soon. Yep. If I'm really honest, I don't want to see Chris on television. No. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm, yeah. I'm scared of the guy right now. Who likes an avalanche? Right? Especially a little nasty avalanche. Yeah. Well, the next time you might see him, the TOC Belmo, which will be the next tournament that you're available for back here in Jupiter. Live coverage.
on Fox Sports, February 28th for the TOC. Kelso just needs five to move on to the title match. And he is title match bound. I wonder what's going to go through his mind when he steps up for his first shot against Simonson in the final match. Through Kelso's mind or Simonson's mind? Kelso's. Simonson's been in that position many, many times. He's gone against this man, Jason Belmonte, to my left many times. He knows what it's like. I think the one thing that's going to really benefit Chris is that whilst this is a very important match against Anthony, it's not for the title. Bowling your first title match, knowing that you're either going to win it or lose the title, it does weigh on you ever so slightly. So knowing that this is just a chance to go on to the next round, maybe it won't affect him nearly as much. Clearly, he isn't affected by the lights. Clearly, he isn't affected by the oil patterns out here. Uh, and he's not affected by the other players. I will add one caveat to all this, though. Anthony will come out and will be the first right-hander that he's had to play since Darren. Right. What will happen to the lane pattern? Correct. Will yep. Anthony be playing a little further left than Chris to create that transition yeah. faster? Those are the things I'm interested to see. Right of target on that one. That might have been a little search and reconnaissance mission. 254 to 226, your five seed. The Cinderella story from outside Denver moves on. And Chris Kelso with the 254-226 win, standing by live with our Kimberly Pressler. Well, Chris has been like a freight train since the start of this show, taking out your opponents in dominating fashion. So, Chris, I got to ask, is this how you thought your debut on national television was going to go? Um, I didn't want to put too much thought into it. I just wanted to show up, throw the best shots I could, and whatever happens, happens. Well, you're throwing some pretty great shots. You have secured yourself into the finals, but now you're taking on the number one seed, Anthony Simonson. Are you going to change anything up? What's your game plan? Just try to keep making good shots. Hopefully the pins fall down and wait and see. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You don't think there's any chance whatsoever that Kelso gets up against Simonson in this match and doesn't ever think about the possibility of winning $250,000? I guess we'll wait and see. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. Four finals last year. Four second place finishes. Bowling's prodigy has one thing on his mind. Championships. Anthony Simonson's redemption tour starts now. And the Redemption Tour will be televised live on FS1. You just saw him whip by your camera. The one seed, Anthony Simonson, here in the West. Take a look at the tail of the tape, if you will. And a lot of zeros next to Kelso. At 24 years old, Anthony Simonson quickly, Randy, closing in on a Hall of Fame type career. Yeah, he's already got the credentials. He needs 20 years as a PBA member. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's a lock. Yes. A seven-time PBA champion with two major titles, the youngest ever to win a major, and then two majors, is Anthony Simonson. Rob, did you know that he was the youngest to ever win a major? <laughs> I think I've heard that now three times today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a slim down, Anthony, as well. We, we talked about Jacob Buttruff, Jason, having a, a new focus off the lanes. I think you're seeing it in Mr. Simonson as well. Like we said, I think he is well aware of what it's going to take to have longevity at the top. This is also a first. It's the first time that Kelso has not started a match today. How much do you read into that? It usually comes down to which lane you prefer as a top seed, which lane do you want to finish on? With Anthony starting the match on the left lane, he must feel like he has a better look on the right lane. He 
left lane, right lane, middle lane, lane in space. It doesn't matter. All he's been doing is striking, striking, striking today. In his three matches, every match, he's had nine strikes. Yeah, you're right. I, I've got a new nickname for him that Carry just on. came uh, over the air. Kodiak Kelso. Kodiak Kelso. Not, not bad. Hey, real quickly, Rob, a big shout out to our dear friend Mark Kalkavecchia, 13-time winner on the PJ Tour, avid bowler, lives five minutes from here, used to have lanes in his house, recovering from back surgery. All your friends from the PBA wish you well, Mark. Speedy recovery. Another Again? pocket seven. Wow. And both on that left lane, Jason. Yeah, and this time in the second frame, not the ninth. <laughs> so is it is that worse? Absolutely. You know, so now we're looking at Anthony getting up and taking the lead early. I don't think there's been a match today that Chris has has been behind in the match. He's pulled away from the outset in all three prior matches. So even that little things like that can sometimes just play on your mind yeah. ever so so slightly. It's a, it's a great point. He has not trailed once today. And this is Anthony's more favored lane. This is the lane he wanted to finish the match on to get away early double. Um, the other thing that's interesting watching Anthony bowl right now is he's using the trend, storm trend. He's playing further to the right of Chris. So he's actually not bowling to the left of Chris, which I think is a little bit surprising. You're slowing up the racks. Though. You're surprised at the way he's playing this this pair. I'm not. I'm not surprised in terms of will it work or won't it work. I think obviously he's doing what he thinks is going to work. What I thought was interesting was with Chris not seeing much transition, not really understanding the moves of transition on television. It may have been worth bowling a little further left of him with a ball that was going to create that transition. But Anthony seems to have found a a very comfortable line where he is right now and feels like, all right, we're just going to straight send haymakers to each other and see who comes out on top. Well, the only way that he can go straighter from right of where Kelso is playing is by throwing it really hard. And that time he kind of missed it at the bottom of the swing and left that flat tag. So strike, strike, spare for Simonson. Kelso gets on the approach. Strike, spare for him to start. You see his average today, 267.7. His wins by 24, 55, and 28 pins. And he gets back on the strike train. So now strike, spare strike for Kelso. And millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why we at Fox Sports and Good Sports are restoring play for kids and the programs that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Text PLAY, P-L-A-Y, to the number on your screen to help keep kids in the game. I've got a question for you, Randy. Yeah. When was the last time, if ever, you saw a first-time television competitor average 267.7 for the first three games on television? Can't remember. I don't think it's ever happened. It That's why I can't have... remember it. Anybody even come close? I don't, think so. I don't think so. Come on. So now back to back jacks for Kelso. That's a big double right there mm -hmm. for, for me in terms of how this match can unfold. Chris has thrown a lot of strikes today. And as someone who competes, when you get into those rhythms and you throw a lot of strikes, when those strikes get broken up by spares, it can affect you a little bit. So that double was really critical for Chris to feel comfortable again. Simonson off a spare. Here he is in the fourth, back on the strike tree. Yeah, playing a much more direct line. Anthony's playing more of the hold, looking to see the ball just kind of sit there in the oil more, not really using the friction too much. Uh, and that's 
that is a, a smart play, but it's also when, also when you're playing someone who's striking so much, you have to execute perfectly. Something we talked about in the open, Jason, he's taking more notes, he's practicing more this season as well. It's the maturity that we were talking about. It's the understanding of, you know, what it takes to, to be a successful champion many years in a row out here. And the fact that he's understanding that, come on, is one of the reasons why we're going to see Anthony in the top five for the rest of his career, probably. Check out that ball speed. 21.1. Yeah, that's bringing it. He had that early success. And, and maybe that gets to a young pro where they're like, what I'm doing is working. And if what I'm doing is not practicing, why, yeah. why mess with it? I think that was the, the strongest message and the best thing I could have ever heard from Anthony Simon said when he said, I'm going to work harder and I'm going to practice more. Uh oh, oh, oh great my break. Goodness. Great break for double K there. Way clean ish. Needs to clean this one up though. Takes care of the single pin and the spare of the game is brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. Mortgage rates are historically low. Save money at rate.com today. Take another look at the single pin conversion. Well, it took three and a half games to see a bad shot from Chris during during the middle of a match. He'll need to bounce back quickly. This is by far the earliest he's had to complete two spares in a match today. And he gets back with a strike there in the sixth. Well, only one thing was missing last season for Anthony Simonson, that a PBA title. He looks to pull closer to winning the first event of 2021 next. All right, thank you, Matt. We're back here live, Jupiter, Florida. PBA Players Championship, the West Region Finals. Your one seed, Anthony Simonson, up 10 pins on the legs. Cinderella story. The five seed, Chris Keltzer. Simonson, seven tour titles, two majors, four times though a runner-up last season. So that's three in a row now for your one seed. Well, so far so good for Anthony's decision to go straighter and faster. Can I have a re-rack, please? Taking a re-rack here. And it's interesting that, and I get that it's partly because Simonson is throwing it much faster, but Kelso actually creating higher RPMs with his thumb in it. I'm not saying that Anthony is a low rev guy, but comparatively speaking, typically the two-handers that don't use their thumb, extremely high rev rates. Look at the eyes of Kelso behind Simonson, just staring down the lane, the oil. A nice little run here from Simonson. What makes that shot not only impressive, but important in the match is Chris is now going back to the lane in which he almost threw that big four split. Yep. Had Anthony not struck there, the match potentially could have been even again. Now Chris is behind in the match. He's going onto the lane. He may not feel as comfortable on now. That's a, a really impressive double from Anthony. Well, oh you, you touched on it early on. He, he never really read the transition on that right lane. And after going high and almost leaving the big four, he comes right back with a Greek church. I, I'm not entirely sure he had to read any transition until right now. I think he got away from it. I think the number of left-handers on the TV show helped limit the amount of transition. Anthony's come onto the set, bowled his practice shots, bowled a few extra shots, and now he's starting to see that transition. 
Uh, his first open frame of the afternoon. And not at a good time. Correct. You know, he's coming late into the game. Anthony's uh, only left the one spare in the third frame. Mathematically, still in this. Has to strike now and then has to hope for a lot of help with Anthony. But because Anthony is not going near the friction like Chris is, I can't see Anthony really making a mistake like that. It's a nice bounce back ball from Kelso. He has just been so impressive. I know he's going to be disappointed with the way this match has unfolded, but a 269, a 268, a 254, comfortable double-digit wins at all three matches as a five seed. As a, as a guy who is a part-timer out here, this has been a really impressive afternoon from Kelso. But there's a reason Anthony Simonson is your one oh, seat no. and one of the Light. best in the world. Oh, How baby. about that? 7-10 staring at him for a split second. Messengers deliver. Well, this is just dirtier than a gas station bathroom. Watch that head pig come off the sidewalk and gave the 10 in. That is dirty. This match all but over. Anthony Simonson trying to punch his ticket to the $250,000 dance. We had a better one, Ennis. The winner of the five regions move on to the championship show, the PBA Players Championship, coming your way next month, February 21st, live on Fox 1230 Eastern. Next Saturday. That's pretty good. Right next there. Sunday, it's the Southwest. Yes, come on. Region. So Kelso steps up right now, and, and we were talking to him this week, and he said, guys, I wasn't even sure I was going to make it to Arizona to try to qualify for this event. His dad, Mike, had been in the hospital for 10 days, was able to come back home, and then had to go back to the hospital, put on a ventilator, COVID-related issues. But there's some good news to this story. And Kimberly has it. Absolutely, Rob. There is some good news because I talked to Chris at the top of the show and he told me that his father, Mike, was taken off the induced coma on Thursday and he was able to speak to his dad for the first time since January 12th on Friday. Wow. He said that his dad just kept saying, I'm so proud of you and I can't wait to watch you on television. And then Chris told me that after speaking to his dad, he was completely calm for his nerves coming into today. And he says, I just want to bowl really well for my dad and have him be proud of me. And I think he absolutely accomplished that today. 100%, Kimberly, 100%. Mike, back home in Colorado, thanks for watching. Your son has done a hell of a job today. He sure has. I, I want to see this guy out more. Easier said than done, I realize. I'm not sure the rest of the guys do. I, they don't have a vote in this one. <laughs> so Kelso's going to clean this one up. It, it's done and dusted. Simonson is going to move on. He's going to represent the West. But Kelso, what a story he was today. Yeah, just uh, the... the Pretty much the two frames out of out of four games. Yeah, he, he, he missed it on the right lane. I think when he got away with that split and it broke it all up, the next move needed to be dramatically larger than what he did. I think he crept one board, or maybe even two, but I think it needed to be a little more. What, uh, what's your move off of that? On television, it's so hard, Randy, just because of there's there's. The transition is so different because you just don't have the amount of play. But in that particular position, you probably would have jumped a little further left, slowed the ball speed down a little bit, um, and, and try and create a similar shape. But uh, not to be for Chris. Obviously, another move would be to move further right, throw it faster like Anthony. Right. <laughs> Seems to be working pretty well for him. Now, is this guy right here, does he, does he carry your torch when, when you're done? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said that for the last couple of years. I think the way that he's developed as a player, uh, the tricks, the tools, um, and I've said it again multiple times in the past, that the only thing that was ever preventing Anthony from really achieving greatness was himself getting in his own way. And now that he's maturing, um, I can start to see you know, what I think his potential is. And he's going to make me work really hard for the back half of my career to try and... Uh, 
add to my resume. This is not a PBA Tour title right now, but it's certainly going to feel like one, and it obviously puts Anthony in contention to win his third major. A new format this year at the PBA Players' Championship. Players internationally and domestically being assembled in five different regions. A really intelligent approach to this PBA season. We're, look, we're all dealing with a lot of things in life right now, yep. what's going on with this pandemic and the PBA making this tournament accessible to everybody. Kind of a kind of a, almost a March Madness type vibe to it, where you get all the different regions coming together and then they coalesce together for the final four. Well, it'll be the final five in a couple weeks here in Jupiter. Turner Janitorial Services, looking forward to being on in a few more weeks. Anthony will be there as well. 279, 205, convincing win. And there you go, pop up Simonson's head there in the West. He is moving on next Sunday. It is the Southwest Championship. And we go back down to lane, Kimberly Pressler. Getting set to talk with Anthony Simonson who slides in right about now. So Anthony, I think Rob said it best earlier. He said you were the number one seed and one of the best in the world for a reason because Chris looked all but unstoppable, striking left and right. How were you able to stop him and, and walk away with this win? Uh, you know, first things first, that was incredible bowling. I haven't seen uh, anything like that on TV in a while. Uh, I knew I was going to need to bowl a big game. Uh, I was hoping that there'd be a little transition for him, being that there had only been two other righties on the pair. Uh, you know, I came out. I'd say I made eight out of ten really good shots, uh, you know, and that, that helped me lead to victory. Well, how were these lanes for you? Because it didn't look like you had any issues with them. Uh, you know, I, I had pretty good understanding during practice, uh, you know, over there, as well as our TV pair practices. It was one of two options with uh, one ball. I was going to use the trend. Didn't really matter, uh, you know, what I saw it was going to be that ball, whether from the left side of the lane or a little straighter like I just did. Now, when we were doing our interviews uh, previous to the show, you had said that your 2020 season was good. You had four second place finishes, but you wanted to win a major. Today, you secure your spot in the finals at the end of February. What does this say for your 2021 season starting? Uh, you know, we're off to, I mean, no better start, really. Um, you know, advance to the big show. We've got a month to prepare and stay sharp. Uh, you know, I look forward to being back. All right, well, congratulations on this win, and we'll see you at the end of February. Thanks, Amberly. All right, Kimberly, Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, back here with you, uh, lane side, and uh, all, all the energy, all the momentum was Kelso coming into the final of the Western Conference right now, and then Simonson just squashed that. The 24-year-old, we talked about him in the, the buildup to the show. This is a young man that those who bowl professionally out here realize he's one of the best on the tour. Maybe not everybody else outside does. Get in the sense that that's about to change. Yeah, I, I think we're all getting that, uh, you know, for those of us that work the tour, that bowl on tour, that know about the PBA tour, we all know about Anthony Simonson. For the casual fans and the viewers at home, they may not, but they're going to find out real quick how good this young man is. And then I thought it was really kind of interesting uh, when we did our Zoom conference with him and he's, he talked about, you know, the lifestyle changes and uh, doing this and doing that. And then he brought up the fact that he was practicing way more. And we were like, wow, what an, what a, what an idea. What a, what a concept that is. Practice more and get better. But you know what? Um, it, I've seen him do this before, Rob, where he played the lanes completely different. And unlike his opponent, he did it against Belmonte to major and one. And he did it here today and shot 279 in that final game. Yeah, 74 pin win. Uh, Jason, your big takeaway from what you saw from Simonson today, what was it? I think Anthony's ready to have a massive year is pretty much what I took away from all of that. He's been in great form for the last 18 months. Winning on television has also been one of the issues of 2020. So to get these uh, W today is going to give him a lot of confidence moving forward. Massive shout out to Chris. What a brilliant performance. If it wasn't for uh, a couple of perfect seven pins um, I think the, the title or the the final match they would have been a little bit closer but massive shout out to him and congratulations to Anthony yeah and, and on the Chris Kelso theme I, I want to give you one last lick to get in on the big man over here 
I, he was so impressive. Sure and, was. you know, like we talked about in that last game against Simonson, his day really came down to two shots on that right lane. And, and you know, Belmont kind of pointed it out. It just took a little longer to happen. And then once Simonson uh, came on the lanes, the lanes may have changed just enough. He missed that one transitional move where the lane, that right lane got a little bit drier to the right. He hit it both times. Got lucky in the first break when he tripped out the big four. And then the Greek church that was his undoing. And that basically ended any chance he had of beating Simonson. The head mechanic. This is a five seed. I know, but right. he's a hell of a Barely able to make it to Arizona. Kid ball. Man. He, Kid, you like Kodiak? You like Bam Bam? You like Avalanche? I, like I, I do like They're Bam. all great. I like Bam Bam. I like Bam Bam a lot. So next week, we're back here with you in Jupiter. It's the Southwest Region Final. Some really fascinating stories, but Francois Lavoie is your number one seed. We will see you one week from today, 2 Eastern on FS1. And this whole tournament concludes in February back here at Bolero Jupiter. We already know one of our five finalists. It will be Anthony Simonson, who was your one seed and ended up winning the West in convincing fashion. 279, 205 over Chris Kelso, who really was the story coming into this one. For Randy Belmo, Kimberly, and our entire hardworking Fox PBA crew, I'm Rob Stone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Anthony Simonson moves on.